Do you know the 14 traits of successful chiropractors? We've interviewed some of the top chiropractors in the industry and have identified the common traits that they all share. Jump on over to www.chirobusinessmojo.com to get your free report today. Welcome to the Cairo Business Mojo Podcast, where we deconstruct the methods, marketing, and mindset of successful business people and chiropractors from around the world. And now your host, Dr. Richard Day. That is no lie. I am Dr. Richard Day, and this is the Cairo Business Mojo Podcast. Hello, and thanks again for hanging out with me. Well, the business mojo is definitely strong with my next guest. Over the course of 14 years, Dr. Fred DiDomenico opened four successful spinal corrective chiropractic practices in three states treating 500 to 700 patients a week. A 1987 graduate of the Los Angeles College of Chiropractic, he quickly found the philosophy of chiropractic after school and elevated his life's purpose to help as many people as possible understand and live this philosophy and lifestyle. He's endeavored to become his best with spinal correction and as an inspirational leader with powerful communication, team, and practice building skills to reach his vision and calling on a global scale in his life. Dr. Fred began working with Pettibon in 2002, became an instructor, and in 2008 began a close, united relationship with CBP, attending over 100 hours a year in technique seminars, becoming the most qualified coach for spinal corrective practices. He's coupled this with professional communication training systems for the last 18 years and continues today. The most predominant communication systems are NLP and life coaching, similar to the most effective and sought-after business coaches in the world today. His organization, Elite Chiropractic Coaching, offers a new model for a new world building the highest value for your care while creating, while creating lifelong, committed, and inspired relationships with your patients in the profession. Welcome, Dr. Fred DiDomenico. How you doing? It's great to be here, and thank you for the opportunity to chat with your audience in the podcast world out there. Well, I appreciate your time with us, and feel free to jump in and correct anything I did in your bio that I got wrong or fill in any gaps that are missing. Yeah, no problem. Uh, it's probably uh, more than it's probably more updating than uh, than anything wrong. That's for sure. <laughs> well, uh, tell us a little bit about your chiropractic coaching. Well, you know, I think the real thing, the real reason is why some people do that, you know, and I went to LACC and as, as you know, you probably heard in my bio and I didn't get philosophy, but fortunately in the first few months I ended up at DE where I really got the principle of chiropractic and, you know, like everybody out there listening, chiropractic isn't a job you choose. It's a calling that chose you, you know, you come in chiropractors, there are certain types of people, you know, we think differently. We're not happy with the status quo. You know, we look at the world and we want to make it better and different. You know, you come in like that and you're born a chiropractor. So whatever life path you took that you may think you chose it, just know in the spirit world, you know, you were chosen. So, you know, that's what I really believed. And I, and I believe that, you know, when I looked at a person's x-ray and, and I said, you know, this, you have a curve where you're not supposed to, or it's supposed to be like this, and it's not like this, you're subluxated, and it really does cause disease and death, that uh, we should be able to change it. And so spinal correction, to me, was the application of the principle. Now, I mean, I, I in, it really, elite is really about that. Now, the problem is that in the principle of chiropractic, we want people to come in, whatever, whatever they came in with, and then what I found is we want to live them a certain live, help to us. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm tripping over myself. Help them live a certain life. You know, so so we sat there and teach the principle, and we describe an X-ray, but people come in with all different personality types, and you know, although I had for you know kind of they were successful practices, five hundred, seven hundred a week. Hey, for some people that's a good morning. You know what I mean? So <laughs> so um, you know, I'm not preaching anything about volume. But it was the person that walked out that bothered me. And being very spiritually based, you know, if we're going to be ruler over many, then we have to be faithful with one. And so what I learned pretty quickly is chiropractic didn't have the communication um, to really reach all different kinds of people. You know, I wouldn't sit there and talk to a CEO the same way that I would talk to a stay-at-home mother of four. Right. You know what I mean? And what I found was chiropractic didn't know that. And although I could predict a correction and although I felt confident people would commit 
and I could get their family. It was the one that walked out. You know, and the really amazing thing is chiropractic is so awesome that we see so many healing miracles. But the reality was it wasn't the healing miracles that gave me my conviction. It was the people that died. So when I look back at the thousands of patients that I, that I were under my care for 15 years in four clinics, there's five people that stand out in my mind. And really three of them, um, the adjustment kept them alive. And when they stopped getting adjusted, they died. And so you realize that every person is making a life or death decision. I don't, I don't need to take time to go into those stories, but I can see their faces. And out of thousands of people, especially those three, um, you know, they stick with you. And I just felt a responsibility that if I don't find a way to communicate, to know that, that I did my best, then a subluxated person walks out the door. Yet we take for granted that we have a gift and that person may walk out, but our family is getting adjusted tonight. And I just think if we have that privilege, then we need to be our best. We need to raise the bar on our standards. We need to help change the way people think and they want to live their life so they can have the same life that we are gifted with. And so what I did was I went outside of chiropractic almost 20 years ago. I started studying NLP. I started saying, what are the greatest leaders do? And, you know, I, I, I say this frequently. Who's Michael Jordan go to when he's in a slump? Who's Serena Williams? Who's Oprah go to? Who's presidents go to? Who's the top CEOs? And what I found was I just started studying what Tony Robbins did. And if he can take 8,000 people in a seminar at the end of the first day, people that are going there to become self-empowered, and he can take them across 2,000 degree coals and less than 0.5, you have less than a half a percent get blisters. Wow. You got 8,000 people and 30 out of 8,000, they don't even burn their feet. They just get blisters. What the heck is he doing? And I thought, what if we could model, that's like the oldest success principle in the world, what if we could model the self-empowerment system that Tony Robbins does that could have our patients walk across fire to change their life? And, you know, the power, and this is a famous quote of his, I don't know where he got it from, but it could be original. The power of your life is, is based on the power of the questions you ask yourself. And I remember the day that I said, how do I get as many people as possible, the highest percentage of people as possible, to look at chiropractic like I do? Because if they did, they would lead a totally self-empowered life. And then I realized that chiropractic is really a self-empowerment system with a healthcare application. The problem is nobody in the profession has taught us how to be self-empowerment coaches. And so with that, I formed Elite Coaching to teach doctors that you're really a self-empowerment coach with a healthcare application. And in my opinion, we need to fix subluxations. So the healthcare application that we, that is a core value, top core value in Elite is spinal correction. So, so if we can have the best in communication, the same thing that world class leaders are doing, the best in the world, the people that are influencing people from the, from the top stages in the world, and we can apply a business model to it and an application that aligns with the principle, then we just created the most powerful group that's ever existed in chiropractic. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. I mean, I'm just taking a moment to really absorb everything you touched on there because it's a lot. And I, I'm definitely hearing the parallel between what you're saying. You know, the patient is coming in with their ache or their pain. There's a much bigger picture at work, and that really has to do with their mindset and, and running their lives. Would you agree that it's just the same for chiropractors? It's more than just our job. It's a whole uh mindset. Oh, there's no question. I mean, the mantra in Elite is mindset and systems grow your practice. And what I found is, you know, like in our boot camps, we teach doctors how to take people through that emotional self-empowerment cycle where they clear it. You know, I can identify their limiting beliefs. We literally teach them 
different archetypes, different personality types, what their limiting beliefs are, how to clear them, and how to lead people in, into empowered action. And in that process, the fascinating part is in order to learn it, they have to go through it. And so doctors and staff come out of that experience so empowered that now we're starting a program because we've had over 200, couple hundred doctors go through this. And we see an average of 30 to 50 percent growth in 90 days. So now our 90 day difference program is we guarantee an average of 40 percent growth after you go through this experience and it's guaranteed or the coaching to get you to that level is free. That's how predictable it is. In fact, we have a 93.6 percent success rate of 40 percent growth, 30 to 50 percent growth or more in 90 days or less. And the 6.4 that don't get it, well, their services go with it. They don't follow up with the coaching that goes with that program. So so you go to those experiences and I, I help you implement it. So the people that don't get it are the ones that don't follow up. They don't have a good follow-up. But the people that follow up have a 93.6 probability of success, which is almost unheard of, probably unheard of in the profession. Well, and again, I mean, just to draw the parallel, it sounds a lot like patients who are compliant with their care plan and those who aren't. Obviously, the ones who are compliant are the ones who are going to do better. And the, the same goes for the training that you're giving the docs as well. Well, exactly. So when you ask that question, you know, tell us about elite coaching. OK, there you go, man. That's like that's the short version. Well, you touched on something there, and the word was communication. You, you've obviously helped a lot of folks and talked to a ton of doctors. Is communication the most common thing you see that keep, that's keeping chiropractors from being successful, or is it something else? Well, certainly it's mindset. It's definitely communication. There's no question. I mean, communication in any business is really the foundation of success. And, you know, and the difference is what chiropractic has taught us for 121 years, well, they taught us the principle but what a, lot of ma- what a lot of management groups have taught us is the close. And what they've done is they've taught us how to close and create a chiropractic patient. Well, we don't, I don't want to create an elite. We don't create chiropractic patients. We create inspired leaders. And so when a person, when a patient becomes an inspired leader, number one, we show you how to build a lifetime relationship. So our focus is not on the close. Like if you got a problem closing people, then you got a big problem. But the the principle says lifetime patient. So we show you how to build lifetime repay, lifetime relationships and how to create inspired leaders in yourself, in your team, and in your patients. And that's one of the reasons that we get such guaranteed results is the patients go out into the community and they bring people back. So you're, so to think that you're creating a chiropractic, you want, you're trying to close a chiropractic patient is such short term thinking that's almost like a pain patient. That's analogous to a pain patient. Yeah. Okay. Because it's a short term goal with the, with the intention to create a lifetime relationship and to create an inspired leader. If you create a leader, a leader can teach. And if they teach it, they master it. And if they master it, they can live it. So a master is not known for how many students they create. See, that's trying to create a chiropractic patient. A master is known for how many masters they create. And elite focuses on creating great masters. Well, let me ask you this. Let's say I come to you. I'm Joe Average, and I have a Joe Average practice. Take us through the the highlights of what you would do with me. How would we start What would be our goals and walk me through that progression from average to exceptional? Well, first of all, you know, I'm a life coach and we apply life coaching in elite. So first of all, I'd say, okay, Joe, we're average. The first thing to understand is you're a chiropractor. So you're not average. It's your only belief system that can make you average. So let's start with we need to at least open your mind to the possibility that you're created to be great. Then the next thing is let's find out where your practice is because that's a mindset. And then let's find out what your vision is. What's your 10 out of 10 that would make you feel like not only you're fulfilling your purpose in chiropractic, but you're, but you're leading a fulfilling life. And the problem is what's been created in the past 
is a lot of management groups have taught work hard systems. Go out, do screenings, do all this. And the problem is, you know, they're so chained, they become a prisoner to their purpose. And I was like that for 11 years where it's like, man, if you want to maintain a decent volume, you got to work, 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 work. And then the problem is the things that you value most, like your family, begin to suffer. What I find is people call me. Yes, they want to be more financially successful, but even successful people call and what they want is freedom. One sec. Yeah. So what they, what they're asking for is freedom. That's their value because they don't want to be chained to their clinic. And so, you know, so when I find out what their vision is, then we lead them to that path. We set up systems so their practice runs like a machine with them or without them. And that way, you know, you become more than successful. You become fulfilled because you're not chained to it. You're fulfilling your purpose. Hey, if you want a day off or you want to go on a vacation with your family, you know, you have multiple purposes in your life. And you, and in my opinion, to, ri- to live an enriched life, that you can fulfill all of them. So you mentioned being an inspired leader to a staff. What are the key points of doing that? What do I need to be able to do to inspire and lead my staff? Well, first of all, the doctor has to have unwavering conviction. Your passion and purpose has to has to um, just almost without you talking, just in your beingness, you you hold you show the team where the bar is that they're so inspired by how you live that it, it brings the best out of them. The problem is when a doctor doesn't follow systems because doctors, can, you know, they're artists. Chiropractors are artists, you know. They can be very creative. Well, well, they, they tank the systems. The next thing is you can have a great purpose and get your team fired up, but then, you know, if you don't have the communication, when the staff sees patients choose pain care, then it tanks their motivation. If you give them a goal and they can't reach it, every time a patient walks out, every time a patient quits care, every time a patient chooses pain, every time they say, Doc, I can't afford it anymore, you actually tank the tone of your team because you gave them a purpose they can't reach because your systems are weak. So number one, you have to set the bar high so they want to raise it. And then your systems and your mindset have to match so you're actually doing what the purpose and the vision is. And if your systems are inconsistent, you could take a perfectly good, uh, even great team person and you'll turn them into task driven. And task driven teams make mistakes and they lose motivation. And then the next thing I say is, is people say, you know what? I got a great team. Well, the difference is your team can love the purpose, but they have to live the purpose. They have to live it inside and out because if they feel motivated in your clinic, but they step out of your clinic and they have problems in their life, when they come back the next day, they bring their emotional backpack through the front door. So if they're not willing to be exceptional in every area of your life, and this is where another thing, elite, is so different, that the systems that we apply and we teach, because we teach the team self-empowerment, they become self-empowered because we teach them to create inspired leaders that they become inspired leaders and they take what they're learning in elite coaching and in their practice and they take it into their personal life. And what you find is they become exceptional people. When they become exceptional outside the practice, they become a united, strong, exceptional team inside the practice. So, so we set it up. So the systems they learn, create exceptional leaders inside and out. And when they not only love the purpose, but they live it, your practice goes through the roof and you don't have to work because the team builds it for you. So I want to get clear on something. If I come to you and I'm the doctor and I own the clinic, the coaching's not just for me. I I bring my staff too. Definitely. You can't do it without your team. I mean, a doctor can be all fired up, but if your team is on the same page, you're done. You're not going to get there. Or you're going to work so hard to get there that you're not going to be able to maintain it. So basically, you're not going to get there. 
Well, we've talked some about the communication and how important that is and also the mindset and the systems. Let's get down to brass tacks on the dollars and cents side of things. Do you incentivize at all for your staff, for example? Are they, if they are spreading the message and bringing folks in or helping out more, does their paycheck reflect that mindset, that extra effort and what they're doing for the practice? Well, there's no question. I mean, there's a basic uh, philosophy and principles of business. You know, you have a principle, you have a truth, you have a purpose, you establish your core values, you have systems, you know, and then, and then you have growth and then there's financial reward. So, uh, you know, it's been my philosophy that the purpose of chiropractic is so strong that when we're really making an impact in the community and today you can make an impact around the world that, uh, everybody should be financially free. So there's no question you have bonus systems that inspire the, the team, of course, the purpose inspires the team, but you, but they need to be rewarded. So, so there's basic principles that uh, you're going to follow that every successful corporation, the business, and just personal empowerment follows. And if you don't do that, then you're going to hit a ceiling. Well, certainly I, I, uh, I agree with that. You know, I spent, uh, in a previous life, I was in sales for a number of years and sometimes it was strictly commission. And I'll tell you, you never saw a more motivated person, uh, than the person who knew that they may not be able to make a house payment if they didn't work, you know, and do what they needed to do. And it was very different than I, to, to completely contrast that one summer I worked uh, as a government employee and boy, was that a different experience. Everyone got pretty much paid the same no matter what they did. So there is a, a bit of merit there and, you know, um, and some incentive there for staff. And I, I, I thought that might be a part of the program and I, I definitely like how that's structured. I think you're really appealing to what's best for that person and the patient as well, because you're going to have someone delivering that message in a much more effective manner and, uh, looking out for that patient's best interest. Well, yeah. And it's even, you know, just cause words, words have meaning. God, it's so much more than effective. It's an inspired manner. And that's what grows your practice. You know, effective can keep you where you're at. Inspired has an energy of growth. Well, let's talk a little bit about maybe one or two ideas for internal marketing to the folks you already have and the external marketing for new patients, things that are working for you right now, and what you're recommending at Elite Coaching. For marketing, well, if you look at what the business model out in the world is, see, the problem is chiropractic's been in a bubble. You know, it's like 121 years. You know, I just want to go over this real quick. Gallup did a study last year. 14% of Americans go to chiropractors. 70% of that 14% think it's about neck and back pain. That means 4.2% have an idea of what chiropractic is. So, so obviously in 121 years, we have 4.2% of the population. You know, uh, normally I would ask a question, but since there's no audience here, basically we suck. So why don't we just do what the, what the most profitable, profitable organizations in the world are doing. Let's take Apple, for example. You look at a person that, that buys Apple products, they only buy Apple products. So they have loyalty in their culture. Why? Because they know how to build relationships. They build, actually build relationships through technology. But so today, it's all about building a culture. Cultures are relationship-based. Because what they found when the economy crashed 2007 – People that were marketing based didn't do very well. People that were relationship based make it through any economy. So not only is it creating inspired leaders in your patients, but it's how to build relationships with businesses and with leaders in the community. Number one, get them as patients. But number two, when you do that, I mean, you know, our mantra for marketing basic premise is you should have 10 to 15 businesses in the community referring you patients. And if you don't, then any change in economy, you're going to be subject to being on a roller coaster. Because when it comes right down to it, when people are hanging on to their money, they don't go to advertising. They go to their friend they trust. And if they're going to part with their money when people are scared about the economy, but they have a need, they're going to go to some place where they get a guarantee and they have certainty and security. It's the first human need. Tony – Robbins teaches about six human needs. They're going to go with certainty and security, and that's going to be relationship-based. Well, I want to touch on what you said about 
partnering with 10 to 15 businesses who are going to help refer you some some business of your own. Is there any particular business that we should form relationships with? Well, anybody that, you know, anybody that is aligned with your core values is really it, you know. I mean, where do people uh, – well, first of all, you know, the principle says we don't want people going to MDs, but MDs love the science of CBP and they love the science of spinal correction. So I would have – you know, there's actually MDs that like referring to you these days. So I'd go to, I'd, I'd be pulling them out of medical offices. You know, obviously, where do people with back pain go? Yoga studios, Pilates. I'd be in gyms. Like, you know, that that's the obvious stuff. But you got to look at where do you want to be a company doctor and and go speak in those companies. Really speaking for outside marketing, speaking, building relationships. And the mantra that, that we teach in Elite is, is that we add value to the prosperity and health of the businesses in the community. So, I mean, go to a restaurant. They need talks on safety. Every business has a need. If you go handle that need and build a relationship with the decision makers for a business as a community service, they want to use you. Let me ask you this. And this is getting a little more specific, but there's two people that listen to this show, two kinds of people that listen to this show, and that's the brand new doc or soon to be doc, the new grad, and those who have been around and are stuck and looking for a new direction. Do you have one piece of advice for each one of those folks? One for the brand new doc and one for the person who just isn't lost, is lost and is not sure where they want to go and what's going to make them better. Well, the problem is uncertainty brings fear, and the best thing for fear is massive action. Find a coach that you align with. Make sure the core values are consistent, because if you're a spinal corrective doctor, there's lots of coaches out there that don't care what technique you use. Now that's a problem, so that's why a lot of people come into Elite. Um, so, so make sure the core values of your coach align uh, what I found was because I was in a spinal correction that I hired, I paid tens of thousands of dollars for coaches, but my, some of my core values were stronger than theirs. And which means you're going to limit what they can teach you. So find somebody that you aspire not to be like, but when, when they teach you the systems, they resonate that your core values match, but don't stay in fear. You have to move. And then some people think, well, I can't afford it. Well, the reason, see, the problem is the same reason that people don't move is also the same reason other people do move. So when someone says, I can't afford it, another person is saying, I can't afford it, which is why I need to do it, because I don't like being stuck in this place. And the only limitation, obviously, and everybody knows it, is between your ears. So, and everybody knows that. But yet some act and some don't. So you got to decide that if you have fear, you're thinking about yourself. And so if you're thinking about yourself, then how can you fulfill your purpose with a chiropractic message that helps humanity? So you got to get out of it, get out of yourself and say, I need to do it. I need to have some faith. I need to find the right coach. And I need, I, I have to be able to risk everything because when you're willing to risk everything, you'll find out is when you gain everything. But if you're not willing to risk everything, and there's people out there that go, you're crazy, I have a family. Well, your family may be struggling. And I'm sure your wife or a husband, you know, and just yourself sleeping at night, that's a bigger problem. So when you're willing to risk everything is when you'll gain everything. And that's, you know, the, the cave you fear to enter is the same cave that holds the treasure that you see. You got to go into the darkness to see the light. And that's really it. Get a coach, uh, align with somebody that's already done or is doing or has a boatload of clients that want to do exactly what you do, what you want to do, and then model what they do. Well, what should someone expect to pay a coach? There's different coaches out there, different groups, different leaders. What should we expect to pay? Oh, it just depends. I mean, I, you know, there's so many different types of services. I mean, you could, you know, you could pay as little as probably six thousand dollars or eight thousand, and you get a manual and no phone calls. 
you know, you could pay a 30,000, you know, and somewhere in between, but you know, and someone's going to hold you by the hand. So you got to look at, in my opinion, if there was a coaching group that gave you a manual and didn't follow up consistently, or there wasn't somebody there to ask you, answer questions as you go, then I, I probably wouldn't do it because you need help. And the biggest shift is mindset. It's not systems. So you need somebody that when you get stuck, that they're going to be there and actually answer their phone or return your phone calls in a reasonable amount of time. Well, let's shift now. I want to take a step back and talk about the big picture of success and what we're going to do in this next part of the interview. Some of this might be chiropractic related and some of it may not be, but it's definitely going to move into the broader arena. So you've obviously had a lot of success in your life and we learn so much from our successes, but we can learn even more from our setbacks, the obstacles we've overcome and even our failures. So can you share with us something like that in your life and what it was, how you overcame it and the lessons you learned? Oh, um, how I overcome obstacles. You know, it's one thing. It is one thing. You know, I wasn't that smart. I was just smart enough to pay attention. And, and then purpose was bigger than me. You know, you just never, no matter how many times you feel like you get kicked in the shins or punched in the face or even worse, like kicked in the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you get up and you do it again because humanity is waiting for you. Your responsibility to humanity um, gets you through whatever pain of growth that you have to get through. And, and most growth is painful, but your pain is your greatest gift. And if you're afraid of pain, you will never fulfill your any purpose in life. You know, you're just going to you're going to grow old and die frustrated and, uh, you know, I had a vision when I was young. I grew up back east and my, my, uh, grandparents came over from Italy. And I remember seeing my grandfather. He was in his, uh, late seventies on a rocking chair, sitting there with his apron on, you know, on the porch on a summer day with a cigarette hanging out of his mouth, probably hanging out there because he was tired of my grandmother bitching at him. And I'd be playing in the front yard. I was like six, maybe seven years old. And I remember looking at him thinking, I wonder what is going through his mind. I wonder at that age how he looks back on his life and how he feels. And I remember thinking when I sit in that rocking chair, I guess I might have been kind of an evolved little kid, that I want to know that I did something great. And and in chiropractic, whenever I would go through pain, I would remember that vision. And I would say, if I have to do something great, I got to get through this. I got to find an answer. But I'm unwilling to face the, the end of my life without knowing that I gave everything to chiropractic. I mean, it chokes me up a little bit because that's it. You have nothing else. I mean, give everything to your wife or husband, give everything to your kids, and then give everything to humanity to the point where if you don't, you're going to be freaking miserable. And it's just not an option. You know, anything else can't be an option. The only the option is how. It's not if. Well, I want to tie that back to something uh, that we talked about earlier, and that's Tony Robbins. You know, he said in that documentary, I don't know if you've seen it on Netflix, I Am Not Your Guru, and he says he would not be the man he is today without going through what he went through with his mother, who wasn't the greatest person in the world out there. And, uh, yeah, you do. You overcome it. You get back up more times than you fall down, and I think that's really good advice, and, and absolutely – you have to embrace it and give it all. So thanks so much for sharing that nugget of wisdom with us. Hey, my pleasure. So let's talk a little bit about success. I know that's kind of what we've been talking about for the last half hour or so, but let's talk about, you know, what it really is. It's something different to everybody. Is there a secret? Is there a secret? Yeah. You know, they had the book a few years ago and the movie, the secret. Is there a secret? Well, yeah, I think we all know that answer. Yeah, the secret's already explained in chiropractic principle, right? We're, we're part of something bigger, universal intelligence and innate intelligence. What uh, people didn't see, you know, most people don't know is uh, Didi and uh, BJ were really metaphysical people, right? Very highly spiritually based. I'm sure chiropractic wasn't just in his mind. I'm sure that was a divine download. And you look at all the things that BJ created Man, you know, he was connected, right? He knew his innate was part of something bigger, and he connected with universal intelligence, 
which helped him to create all the things that he created. So we're a piece of something bigger. It moves through us. Uh, you can channel universal energy through you. You just have to raise your consciousness, you know, and um, learn to have that spiritual foundation that you know that if you have a vision, God's going to support you. And he's going to show you how. You just have to act in faith. You know, and there's many days I wake up, man, the visions that, that, that I have to create are so big. You know, your vision should be so big that you need God to help you. You know, you can't do it alone. And then there's times where it's so overwhelming where I just, I lay it down and I say, this is yours. I'm just going to serve today and you're going to work out how. So as long as I love people and I serve to my highest ability, then the rest will be taken care of and laid in my path. And that's just a way easier way to live is to live by faith. Well, I talk to many successful chiropractors such as yourself on this show, and I find that most of them have certain things they do on a daily basis that help them be more successful. It could be meditation or prayer, affirmations, other habits or rituals. Is there anything you do that helps you be more successful? Well, every great leader has morning rituals, man. I have about a 45 minute morning ritual, you know. Um, I have a whole bunch of stuff that I do, you know, get up and I do my spinal rehab in the morning. I read the Bible. I read spiritual. Right now I'm going through a course in miracles. Uh, I do my affirmations and incantations. I, you know, I, I visualize and see the visions of what we're creating. I feel it in my body. Uh, I have good nutrition in the morning and then I go work out. So, you know, and so I, I'd probably do that for like 40 minutes, 45 minutes, 40 minutes ish before I leave and go to the gym. And then in the gym, you know, you're training your body, man. And when you, when you're, when you're using your body, you're not in your mind. So a lot of times I get ideas when I'm training, I set the intention and I go work my body. And then when you, when you feel your body, then you you free up your mind. And, and I get a lot of creative ideas when I'm working out. And so I start my day every day like that. Well, I work out six days a week. So, so I mean, you have to, I have to move in the morning. You know, I'm very kinesthetic. So, but yeah, that's it. Every great leader has consistent rituals. And if you don't, it's part of the reason why you may not be, you know, achieving what you want. Well, we're now approaching the home stretch of this incredible interview. Thanks so much for sharing with us your wisdom so far. I've got a few more questions before we part ways. Do you have a favorite book that you'd like to recommend to our listeners? You know, the favorite book that I have is the one I'm reading at the time because you're always going to track the book that um, is at the level of your consciousness. First one that comes across my mind is Deepak Chopra's Seven Spiritual Laws of Success. It's an easy book to read, although it's very intense. I, you know, I probably read it a dozen times. You need, I, I would, I would absorb that into your consciousness. That would be one. I mean, there, you know, there's a ton, but, uh, you know, whatever book that flies off the shelf at you based on what you need at that time is, is your favorite book. So I've had favorite books at different points in my life. Well, what's the best business advice anyone's ever given you? Everybody's ever given me. Yes. Yeah. Someone, a mentor of yours, something that stuck with you, that someone told you about business that has guided you or helped you in some way. You know, I think the thing is, yeah, there's business and we need to look at numbers and you need to measure and you need to do all that. I don't think there was one one liner that anybody gave me, but I do know one thing when you love people. And add as much human value as you can. Add as much value to every relationship as you can. Then you'll develop raving fans. Well, what's That's out of business mastery. I'm sorry, say that again? That's out of Tony Robbins' business mastery. <clears throat> well, that's good stuff. I normally ask people if there's one person that they really look at as the personification of success. But I, my guess is that person for you would be Tony Robbins. Well, I don't, uh, you know, obviously the guy has a multi-billion dollar effect. He's helped the lives of millions of people. You know, again, it's you attract the leader that you need at that time. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, 
Yeah, I mean, obviously, Tony Robbins is highly, there's lots of highly successful people, and you can get things from every person. And so, again, what it is, is is who's the person in front of you? Because there was other people I modeled at different times. So it's wherever you're at right now is the best person. And as you grow, you'll have the next best person. Well, how can our listeners find out more about you and about Elite Chiropractic Coaching? Well, you can certainly go to Elite, E-L-I-T-E, Coaching, L-L-C, dot com. Um, also, just call me personally, 949 949- Seven nine one two nine eight six, or you can email me, Doctor Fred D R F R E D one, the number one, Doctor Fred one at MSN dot com. And you know, I, I mean, I love building relationships with people. It doesn't matter if you're in a lead or not. It's about creating unity in the profession. If there's anything that I can do for anyone that can make their life or practice or mindset or heart better, then I would love to share a conversation. Well, Dr. Fred DiDomenico, thanks so much for spending some time with us and really sharing some powerful messages. It's been my privilege, and I can't thank you enough for sharing your time and wisdom with us here today. Thank you, my friend. Much appreciated. Thanks for listening to the Cairo Business Mojo Podcast at www.cairobusinessmojo.com.